Today, I'm gonna to be showing you how to take your designs from this to this to this super easily using Adobe Illustrator and After Effects only. No 3D specific software or knowledge needed. What's good, how's it going? And welcome back to today's video where we're gonna talk about Chrome designs. I'll break it down for you step by step and hopefully you will learn some new tips or tricks that you can implement into your next design process. So like the video, comment, subscribe, grab yourself a little coffee or something and uh, let's get into it. So I last did a Chrome video about two years ago and oh my God, look at the trim on that mate. And since that time, a lot has changed. There's been some major updates. One, my housemate is no longer cut my hair. And the Creative Cloud apps have gradually implemented more of a 3D design offering, meaning that you can edit 3D assets much quicker and nicer, all without any third-party plugins. So we're going to start off in Illustrator, where we're going to be designing or importing our asset. This is our base, which could be a logo, typography, anything really, as long as the final product is a vector graphic or live type within Illustrator. Keeping it as live type means you can actually edit text after you've applied all of the 3D effects, which is very useful. So I created this type graphic here, which I'm going to be working on today. I've seen a lot of people use this recently on some of this like wavy wobbly type, like the example on screen, which is also cool. So I'll show you how to do that as well. So I'm guessing that most of these are hand drawn, so do give it a go drawing it yourself rather than just using a font. But I have also found some nice fonts that'll be linked down below. So once you're happy with your starting graphic, we're ready to add our 3D effects. So we could do this by going to effect, 3D and materials, and then extrude and bevel to open this 3D panel. Now there are two options we want to consider for our graphics today, and they are these two. So extrude, which will give us a much sharper extruded graphic, and then we've also got inflate. So this is going to give us a much rounder 3D effect, which is more of what you'll see on those sort of liquidy type styles. I'll put an example on screen here of how this can look in the final render. Feel free to play around with either of these options for your designs and see what works best for you. So one quick note, when editing with inflate, you're going to want to make sure that inflate on both sides is checked. That is if you plan on making it spin in 3D. I mean, although this 3D asset is just showing us our front view for now, which is fine, if you're animating or wanting an angle perspective, then you're gonna to start to see the reverse of this design, which means you wanna have the same sort of inflated effect applied there too. There are some other settings that you can play around with here to customize the depth of your design. So have a play with that to get the desired result that you're after. Now, when it comes to creating the metallic chrome effect, we wanna make sure that our design is as clean and as shiny as possible. That way we get some nice reflections across the graphic. And this will also animate really nicely when we take it into After Effects. Adobe does have some nice material presets which you can browse within the materials panel. There are also additional materials that you can get from this drop down menu for free, but it does have a lot of metal textures for you to play with. Um, however, I'm not as keen as the default texture, and this will just apply over whatever color your current graphic is. This also means if you wanted multiple colors to be used within your logo you can for example this smiley face chrome graphic here when applying this will just apply the material over the top of these these colors so within these base properties settings i want to set my roughness to zero and my metallic to one we do want to max it out just so we have like the best reflective chrome effect basically so you might not notice much going on right now but to see a high quality render preview of this which will be closer to what we'll be animating in after effects you can go to this button at the top right of this box and bring down the real-time preview and turn on the ray tracing switch. Depending on how strong your machine is, you might want to keep this on the medium, but put it onto max and get a high quality render preview of your design. I would recommend designing this off, only turning it on to check your designs unless your machine is quite powerful. I want to keep mine as a classic silver. So to do that, I can literally just select the asset and then go down to the color picker. And if you've got rendered with ray tracing on, this will just give you another updated preview, but I'm going to change the hex code of this to a light gray. This is EA, 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 if you wanted to use the same, but select whatever color that you want. Now, if you wanted a static graphic that you just wanted to have this chrome effect on and you didn't want it animating, then we can go and start to focus on the lighting and the additional effects. If you do plan on animating this asset or your design, then you can skip this lighting part and effects part and get straight to the export out of uh, Illustrator. Because when we take this 3D asset into After Effects, it will have its own lighting setup in there. So if you wanted to have like a static design, like again, I'll show on screen here, we can start to play with some of these options. I think it looks best when you have the maximum amount of light coming off so turning these all up will be good so that's just the intensity of the light the height and then also the intensity of the ambient light as well at the top of this window you have this new toggle which is pretty cool you can select the white circle and actually pick where you want the light to fall by moving it about I thought that was a really nice addition that they've literally just added. You do have a diffuse setting as well at the top, which looks really cool. So feel free to play around with that as well. With the rotation, you can sort of play around with this toggle and see where all those highlights are 
sort of sit in. Again, I like to have quite a lot of reflection and light within my letters. So once I'm happy with the sort of base of my design, I can start to add a few more effects on top of this. Um, and one that is quite popular that I quite like to see and quite like to use is an outer glow. So this would just give it more of like a sort of gleamy effect with light bouncing off of your design. You can have some nice color effects here or, or just go for a nice gray monochrome style, which looks really nice against this black background. You can still move the design around and get the right uh, perspective as well. And if this is your live type, you can still edit and change the type, which is nice. So when you're happy with your design, you can also save all of these settings as a graphic style. Simply by opening the graphic style tab and dragging this design onto the new style button. That way, if you wanted to drop a new design into your file, you could simply just click on your asset and then click on this graphic style and it will apply all of those settings for you. Yes, asset store Donnie's. This means that you can sell Chrome presets for Illustrator. Affiliate links are welcome. Just drop me a DM. Um, yeah, we'll chat. Cool, so that is my static 3D design done. Uh, my Chrome asset is all here, it's looking nice. And uh, you can just export this as, as you would normally if you're happy with this, but I'm also now gonna show you how to create an animated version. So as I mentioned earlier, a lot of these effects we applied in here will not carry over to After Effects, such as the lighting and the neon glow, etc. but they can be applied within After Effects directly and we can get the same results really easily. So to get this into After Effects as a 3D model, we need to export our asset as a 3D file. And we can do this by selecting our asset, go to Export Selection, and from the dropdown, we can then choose the GLTF. Select where you want this to export and name it, and then press Export, and we are done for that part. So now we need to animate it in After Effects. So I know what you're thinking, but Louis, After Effects doesn't allow 3D objects to be dropped into it without any third-party plugins, which are really expensive. Well, don't you worry. In the Creative Cloud app, you can now go to this lovely little beta page, which will give you all of the public beta apps by Adobe. The new After Effects that they have does actually allow 3D objects to be integrated. So we could download this app. Mine is already downloaded. The beta apps will have no logo in your Mac dock and no artwork on the booting screen. But what it does have is lots of amazing new features. So once we've downloaded and we've booted up our After Effects beta app, we can create a new composition. So I'm making mine 1080 by 1080 pixels, as this will be for Instagram. Uh, and then I'm going to make it 10 seconds long. We can edit the length of this at any time. It's just a couple of what I need for, for now, but you know, whatever you like. When it opens, we can simply drag and drop our 3D file straight into the composition, press OK, and then boom, our asset is in. If we turn these 3D sliders, you can see that it is in fact a 3D asset. How cool. And then we can use this button here, if we turn it on and off, to toggle the background. So if you're exporting this with a transparent background, then it's a good way to see your animation clearer, especially if it's grey, because it's kind of hard to see on the checkerboard effect. So the asset is in, it's 3D. How do I make it spin? Well, again, that's super easy. For those of you who are not already familiar with After Effects, all we need to do is add some rotation keyframes, which we can do by going down and dropping down this little transformation options. Make sure the playhead is at the start of our composition and then press this stopwatch icon to create a keyframe. Then we can go along with our composition to five seconds and just press this diamond button again to create a new keyframe. If we stay on this frame, we can then also set the rotation amount. So this will be how much it will rotate between those two points. On the left, you can set the amount of times uh, and on the right, the amount of degrees if you didn't want to do a full rotation. I want one full rotation so I can add this into this first box. And just a note, depending on what way that you want it to spin, whether you want to spin it that way or that way, you can change that by being positive or negative and by adding in a plus one or a minus one. So we can now play around and when it buffers and loads, it will do one full rotation within those two keyframes. So we can also drag our work area here using the blue handle and move it to the second keyframe. And that way, when we play it, it will loop continuously between these two frames. If you want to make this slower, then you can drag the second keyframe out and just make sure it moves with your timeline. And if you want to make it quicker, you can also either move it closer or you can add in multiple rotations within those two keyframes. I'm sticking for one full rotation at six seconds. Now the lighting in here is the default lighting and I actually quite like it and I think it works for most use cases. You can however customize your lighting if there was something that you were going for. You could do this by just right clicking down in this layers section and adding a light. You have plenty of options in here from spotlights to panels, uh, all of which you can adjust the colors and sort of positions and intensities and things like that. So feel free to play around with this if that's the sort of thing you're after. But again, I quite like the, uh, the original one. Now, just like an illustrator, when we're done, we can add some nice effects to our 3D design using the effects menu. You can, however, drop this directly on top of your layer to add these. Um, so what we're going to need to do is right click and pre-compose. 
those of you who don't use After Effects, this is basically like creating a smart object, you know, in Photoshop. Once this is done, we can then add effects to that pre-comp. And if you wanted to just double click inside the pre-comp, you can open up your uh, animation again. So some really nice effects that I like to add to these designs are the glow effect. Again, like we did earlier, you can play around with all of these settings and add a nice glow as much as you want. Really looks really nice and dreamlike. There's quite a few settings to play about with depending on the result that you're after, but I'm just upping the threshold and then by changing the glow colors to AB, you can go down and actually select the start color and the finish color of your glow, which is really nice. This will take some playing about with depending on the different colors that you're using, but upping the intensity and the controls here will increase the glow. I also duplicated my glow effect layer by selecting it and then pressing Command D. And then I set that second layer to on top, which gave this really nice inner glow. Another setting that I like to use is the curves effect. This is very much like any other program you've used if you've used this in Photoshop, but this will allow you to edit the highlights and the shadows, giving it more of an intense reflective look. You can create a simple S curve. And then as I have done here, you can make the shadows a little bit darker and the highlights a little bit lighter. There's also various gradients that you can add on top, like this color gradient here, which gives this cool, colorful wash that also interacts with the layers on top, like the glow. Hue and saturation is also a good one to tweak so that the colors are slightly more enhanced and they're a little bit more intense. All depends on what you're trying to achieve or what you're trying to get, but that's basically how you can create the two things that I showed at the start of this video. Cool, so I'm happy with that, and that's time to export. So you will export slightly differently depending on if, if you want a transparent background or not. If you have a background behind your design, then you don't need to export it as a transparent video, and you can just go to File, Export with a Media Coder, and just use the standard H.264 export settings. If you want to export it as a transparent video, though, then you're going to need to do it in a slightly different way. You can go to Export, and then Add to Render Cube. You. From here, you can click on the output settings and choose where you want to export your video. We want to click on the output module and under video input and channels, this RGB drop down will usually let us select RGB and alpha, which is what we need for a transparent video. It's an alpha channel, but we can't at the moment. It's not, it's not as grayed out. That is because this animation format H.264 does not allow alpha channels. So what we need to do is change that. So we can go to this drop down and change this to QuickTime. We then want to go to format options and click click on that. We want to change the video codec to Apple ProRes 4444 and press OK. So now when we go to this drop down, it has this little RGB and alpha selection and that is what we want to select. So press OK and click render and wait for it to render out. So once that's done, it will be exported into your file, which you selected to export it to and we can double click it and press play. Because we loop those keyframes exactly from the start to the end of our compositions, that means that no matter how many times you repeat this clip, it will continuously seamlessly loop. The black background in here will not appear when you drop it to anything else. You can see this example on screen now. So there we have it, really customizable Chrome effect that is easy to make and animate all within Creative Cloud with minimal 3D knowledge needed. Hopefully it will be another process that you can implement into your next design project. If you did enjoy today's video and learned something new, then please drop the video a like, comment and subscribe. And also drop a comment and let you know what you're going to use this on because I get really interested in what you guys actually create with these tutorials. But that is it for me for today. Hope you have enjoyed. Thanks again for watching and I will catch you soon with a new video. So yeah, take care. See you in a bit.